drums. G'day. In the past I've spoken about uh, rivnuts and they're a very handy way of putting a, a, a thread, a nut, onto a piece of uh, thin metal. Uh, but recently I was looking at something which needed the other way around, it needed to have a stud on it. Now structurally it's not such a wonderful idea to do that because all you've got is, is the, the riveted bit of metal holding that stud on but this is just for a, an attachment point for a, a small brush so it should be okay. So this video is about making up the, uh, the mandrel because the, the rivet gun I've got or the rivet tongs I've got won't uh, fit that size um, stud but also about making up the stud itself and I've had a couple of goes at it. I, I had made one out of uh, aluminium and I've made some out of steel uh, and I think I've got it right but uh, we'll see how we go. How do these things work? Well basically you've got um, the, the rivet with the thread in it down the bottom of a, of a close fitting hole and then you wind the mandrel in and engage with that thread and so what happens is that it does this, the side walls here buckle uh, and that, that clinches the rivet to the material. Now what I want to do is I want to put a, a, a thread on the outside here. Okay, so I need a longer mandrel to be able to pull that through. Uh, I also need to make up a few of these to try them out and see whether does this actually work in principle or is it um, one of these ideas that sounds good but just doesn't happen. Before I get started on making the uh the, the, the nut certs or the stud cert I guess you'd call it, I've got to make up a new mandrel. Um, the, the way I've got my stud made is that the threaded part is actually going to be up here somewhere so I've got to make a new one of these up. So for this part I'm actually going to use uh, a high tensile bolt. I'll cut that off, put a, put a thread on there uh, and more on that later. But this part I need a bit of diameter 13 material. I could use some mystery metal um, but uh, this needs to be reasonably strong uh, and it's also got a left hand thread on it too just to make things interesting. So I've got a piece of EN25. Now this piece isn't actually the right shape to put into a chuck. Um, this is the off cut of a, a larger bar. I needed some, some squarish pieces so I, I cut those out and that's all good. So what I'm going to do is I've put some centers on either end I'm, I'm now going to, to turn it between centres and just round it up. Um, it's a long-winded way of doing things but at the same time it's the, it's, uh, the only way I've got of, of making, well in this case, triangular stock in to round. The way I did this was I, I turned the majority of this between centres and then I popped this back in the collet chuck to, uh, to true up or to, to, to round up this end. And uh, just for interest, I've, I've got a dial indicator there. Now that's reading something like uh, 0.02 millimeters over. And if I just wind it back over that step, I'm about 0.03 under. So I'm, these two diameters are concentric within 0.05 of a millimeter, which I don't think is too bad. Um, I'm going to be turning that away anyway so it doesn't matter but uh, it just shows that with a with a collet chuck you can get uh, quite reasonable um, uh, you know line up with these things. Uh, I, I don't think I'd get that with my, my three jaw. Now we get to the, the more interesting part of operations here. I need to reproduce this thread. It's an M10 by 1.25 but it's left hand. You can also see or you may also be able to see it, it goes pretty much right up the shoulder. Now I haven't got an M10 um, by 1.25 left hand die. So what I'm going to do is I've prepared my blank, taken it down to diameter here and I've actually got about 15 millimeters there. So what I'm going to do is using the method I've, I've shown before of uh, threading without a run out groove 
I'm going to put that left hand thread on. I don't want to run out groove because that's going to lessen the strength of the part. Now the thinnest part of the part is going to be this, uh, the bolt pulling on the, um, the nut, but that's high tensile. So this is, this is a high, uh, well it's an alloy steel, it should be a high tensile type thing, but I don't want to have any, any unnecessary stress raises and things. So what I'm going to do is uh, single point that, that thread in until it's the same size as, as this one and then um, I'm going to make up a little collar and just fit that over the top because that sort of presses up against the, um, the internals of, the, of the, the nut supplies so that it needs a stop there, it can't just be uh, hanging in free space. Once I've got that done I can then um, put a hole through the middle for the for the M6 bolt, uh, part it off the length and then at some stage over to the mill and put the uh, the flats on for the for the little spanner to, to, to grab it and then that should be uh, the mandrel uh, once I've mounted the, the bolt in here pretty much done. Here's the mandrel body. Uh, as you might just be able to pick up from the very thin line there, I've uh, put my sleeve over there. I was going to heat shrink it on, but uh, when I when I turned the sleeve up, I got uh, pretty much size for size. So instead, I used a bit of Loctite and and um, pushed that on, uh, and that that should be fine. In the back here, I've tapped it. Uh, I had a um, M6 socket head cap screw. Because that's a left hand thread and it works rather well not to unscrew everything inside, I've also, and I had a left hand uh, tap and die for an M6, I've put an M6 left hand thread on there. Uh, I'll put a bit of Loctite on that too and that will uh, do me. All I need to do then is put the hex on there, I won't bore you with, uh, with doing that because that's pretty straightforward. Um, but then I'll have a, a mandrel which will suit my pliers and I can get on to uh, making up the, the, uh, the nuts and um, stud for it. Part way making, through making up a, a stud cert blank, um, nothing terribly special here, it's just a matter of, of turning. Uh, I have got a, a drawing here but nothing terribly exciting there. The only thing I will note is that that collar is to support the um, the stud on, on one side of the plate and this bit is the bit that's buckling. There's not that much room between, or not much wall thickness there, sorry, between the, the inside and the outside. So what I've done is I've plunged in with my, uh, well it's a parting tool but I use it for, for plunging and all that sort of thing, just to give me my base groove. I'm now going to drill that out and then I can just nibble away at that without having to worry about either um, you know, applying a lot of force and bending this at the hole, or alternately, um, you know, drilling this thing and having it wobble around because it's so thin. So it's a sort of bit of a bit of a compromise. But we'll see how that goes. Here I am at these wonderful, one of these wonderful rubber meets the road moments. Uh, there's my mandrel mounted in the uh, riveting tongs. That that should be fine. There's my um, mock up. I didn't see much point in putting a thread on there or making it out of steel unless I, I knew that this was going to survive and the actual principle worked. Um, it's aluminium, it's uh, 6011 I think is the grade, but uh, we'll see what happens. The actual using is, is pretty straightforward. Um, Well, that felt all good, so we'll see what the story is. Well, there we go. Um, not quite a perfect uh, riveting job. It's 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 um, pushed up a bit there. I don't know why that is, but that's all right. It's certainly firm. I can make up a threaded version of that now and, and put that in with, uh, with some confidence that um, you know, it'll, it'll actually do the job and do what we want to do. 
I'm running out of daylight now, so um, I think that'll be it. Thanks for watching this little experimental, um, uh, what would you call it, rib stud moment. And uh, see you for the next one.